Hey everyone, my name is Anthony Wright. This is my wife Chandra, and we are the pastors of Just Christ Ministries. We are so excited you have decided to join us for this worship experience. We're a church designed with the community in mind, working on the whole person, spirit, soul, and body. Thank you again for joining us. Let's go into service. any battles? The Bible said the weapons of our warfare are not counter, but they're mighty through God. So put it down the stronghold. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my... Come on, I can hear you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is, come on, it may look, hallelujah. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Hallelujah. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Hallelujah. It may look like I'm surrounded. Come on, over here. This is our fight. Come on, declare it. Hallelujah. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. One more time. It may look. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Hallelujah. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Come on, give that a hand cup of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Come on, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Come on, declare victory in Jesus' name. I don't care what battle you're fighting. I don't care what's coming up against you. There are more of those who are with us than are they that are with them. Hallelujah. If God be for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can we lift our hands in God's presence just for a moment and just worship Him for victory on today? Thank Him that all things are working together for our good. Because we love God and we've been called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. We reverence you in this place. Everybody that can, can you please stand if you can? If you can, if you can, if you can. And let's begin to lift our hands in God's presence. And let's set an atmosphere. God inhabits our praise. As we begin to open up our mouths and offer up the sacrifice of praise, God dwells among us. Come on, you have a personal praise. You have a personal praise. You have a personal testimony. Let God know how grateful you are. How much you appreciate him. How much you adore him. Oh, you're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You've been good, God. You've been kind. You've been merciful. You've been our provider, our healer, our protector, God. Come on, declare what God's been to you. Come on, declare what God's been to you. Has he been your comforter? Hallelujah. Your deliverer. Your strong tower. 
Anybody know him as a healer, a mind regulator? Hallelujah, God. You have been all that and then some more, God. And for that, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Come on, he's worthy. He's worthy. Come on, a few more seconds. Hallelujah. A few more seconds. God wants to hear your praise on today. He's heard the praise team. Now he wants to hear your praise on today. For what he's done for you, your personal testimony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Young and old, you have a testimony of the goodness of the Lord. And what he has done for you. Tell about say, neighbor. I don't know about you, but God's been good to me. And because he's been good to me, that's why I praise him like I do. So you might not understand my praise because you don't know my testimony. <laughs> Hallelujah. Does, does your praise reflect your testimony? Come, can you, come on. Does your praise reflect your testimony? See, I don't know about y'all, but I've been through some stuff in my life. And, and because of what I've been through, I don't, I don't have no pity pet praise. I have the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Hallelujah. You saved me from the depths of hell, God. When I was seeking deep in sin, God, you loved me. You restored me. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, God. All the glory, all the honor belongs to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible said, let the redeemed say so. Let the redeemed say so. Any redeemed folks in the house on today? That's been redeemed from the curse. That's been redeemed from poverty. That's been redeemed from sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We declare we've been redeemed on today. We've been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Anybody glad about it? Come on, anybody glad about it? Amen, amen. Give God one more hand clap of praise. You may be seated in God's presence. Amen, amen, amen. I am just so grateful to God for who he is and what he's done in my life. Amen. I, I'm, I'm forever, forever grateful for he has done great and awesome things. At this time, we would like to welcome all of you in the building as well as those of you who are online. Let's give yourselves a welcome. Amen. Come on, clap your hands for yourself. Amen. Thank you once again for those who are online. As always, it is my prayer that during our time together, something will be shared or done to encourage you in your faith walk. And if you don't know Jesus, it is my prayer that you will come to know him on today. We have a couple of announcements real quick. Amen. The fourth Sunday in November, we're starting back up our men's fellowship. Amen. So I'm excited. Come on, man. Amen. How many of y'all excited about accountability? Amen. As men, we need accountability. So I thank and praise God we'll start that up the fourth Sunday in November. Also, next Sunday is our leadership meeting. So we're asking all of our leaders to still be prepared to stick around after church for service. On next Saturday, November the 6th, amen, I see my son, it's his birthday, amen, but also, also the city is going to be in corporate prayer. So Mayor Lori Lightfoot is asking all of us, amen, on next Saturday, uh, which is November the 6th, to be in prayer for our city. And we want to be obedient and join in on that. Many of you all know that Naya is a nurse and she is now qualified to give vaccinations. And so she wanted me to announce that those of you all who are interested in getting vaccinated, whether it's the Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, she will be able to vaccinate you if you so choose to. Also, if you want a booster, she's able to do that. Now, she's not here on today, but I'm going to ask Cinnamon, please, if you all want to get vaccinated next Sunday, please give Cinnamon your information, and Naya will send up for you guys on next week. This is your personal choice, and if you choose to do it, Amen. We will make that available for you. Also, you all know that we started a GoFundMe page. We are still in the process of trying to raise money for our community wellness center. I know some of you guys have given already. If you can, give again. 
share with your network, share with your family, because this is a mandate that God has given us for our community to provide mental health services. And God's putting them on my heart that we're going to get started with what we have. We're going to get started. The, the, the need is so great. We're going to start with what we have. Amen. And we're going to continue on until the project is completed. With that said, let's prepare our hearts to give. How many grateful givers in the house on today? Amen. The Bible talks about giving with a cheerful heart. Amen. So we thank and praise God for the blessing of giving. For those that want to give in the building, please raise your hand. The ushers will assist you with an envelope. And those that want to give online, you can go to our cash app at dollar sign JCM Chicago. Once again, that's dollar sign JCM Chicago. You can also text to give at area code 773 455 0008. Text the word give. Once again, that's area code 773 455 0008. Text the word give. You can also give through our Tively app. I encourage you all to please continue to be faithful in your giving. It is because of your giving that we're able to do all the great things that we are doing. And as a pastor, I am proud to say that we have a church that gives. Come on, give yourselves a hand. Come on, give yourselves a hand. You can do better than that. And because you have been given, we have been able to maintain throughout this pandemic. So I really appreciate your support. Let's prepare our hearts to go into the word of the Lord. How many of y'all came for a word on today? Amen. And there is a word. Listen, I couldn't even sleep last night. I have a headache now because I couldn't sleep. Just anticipation of releasing what God has to say on today. So let's prepare our hearts for the word. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice, and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has. Come on, declare it. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord. Come on, I will enter. Hallelujah. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice for he has made me glad. 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 And I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad, and I will rejoice for he has. Come on, I'm glad to be in this service. I'm glad to be in this service. I'm glad to be in this service. I'm glad to be in this service one more time. Hallelujah. He didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live. I'm glad to be in this service. Come on, come on, declare. I'm glad to be in this service. I'm glad to be in this service. I'm glad to be in this service. I'm glad to be in this service one more time. He didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live. I'm glad to be in this service one more time. One more time. One more time. One more time. I'm glad to be in this service one more time. One more time. One more time. One more time, 
I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. This is the day. This is the day. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has. I'm making a choice. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in God's presence. Hallelujah. I am glad to be in the service one more time. Amen. I heard Rikia soliciting prayers for the death of her loved one who passed in their sleep. Amen. But God has allowed us to be in the land of the living one more day. And guess what? I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to be glad. You know why? Because you never know when your time is coming. Life is too short to be depressed, to be angry. The Bible said that we should cast all of our cares on the Lord because he cares for us. And while I give him my problem, I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to find something in my life that's praiseworthy. Come on now. You may have lost your job, but you still got your health and strength. You may not have no money, but you still got your loved ones. Can you find one thing in your life that's praiseworthy? I, look, in spite of everything that's going wrong, can you find one thing to tell God, thank you for on today? Hallelujah. I'm not going to focus on the negative. I'm going to focus on the one thing and give God praise and glory for that. Amen. So today we are concluding our series entitled Close Ranks. In this series, has really blessed me. You know, as a pastor, I preach a number of series and sermons and what have you, but this is one that I believe will stick with me because the message is a timely message. It is something that we're going to have to remember. Amen. So we need to hide this word in our hearts so when we find ourselves facing adversity, we know what to do. Amen. We're in the we're in a spiritual battle. Hallelujah. We say in that song, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. We fight it with our spiritual weapons. Anybody in the battle? Come on now. You have to fight it with your spiritual weapons. So this message, closed ranks, it is simply people coming together. Differences into a spiritual side so we can correct the human being. Let me say it again for This is simple. It is us coming together, putting aside, I don't like you, you don't like me, putting aside what your hidden agendas are so that we can fight against our common enemy. Believe it or not, we all have a common enemy. Yeah. The Bible adversary who's going to and fro as a royal lion seeking whom he may devour. But the Bible said he is the God of this world. He is the small G-O-D of this world. And he is the God of the world system. And I tell you all, I am clear as day that the world system is not working in our favor. And so we have to come together and like public enemies said, and fight the power. Let me, we have to fight the powers that be. We have to fight against the systems, the mindsets, the narratives that would not let us be who God has called us to be. And I'm going to tell you all this. Like the Jews in Israel, unless we close ranks and come together, we would not get to our promised land. I believe there is a promised land for us individually as well as for us collectively. Amen. I, mean, I believe that God's word is true. I'm going to know he that promises is faithful. Has God made any promises concerning your life? Come and see my head not that bad. For some of us, God has made promises, but because they have been delayed, we have stopped believing God for the promise. The Bible says his blessings are still yay and amen concerning your life. So Pastor Ken, oh, it's still yay and amen concerning your life. Well, I've been through the bus. It's still yay and amen. I fail. I'm not going to It's still yay. The promise is alive. It's well. And in order for us to get it, we have to come together. So, so during this series, we talked about more specifically closing ranks in our homes, in our church, in our communities. 
us coming together once again to fight against those enemies and the enemy that would try to cause division, that would try to defeat us, to kill, steal, and destroy. So he's able to break ranks, whether it be in your family, your church, or your community. No, he's not. He's, so he's killing, stealing, and destroying. So we have to understand. Somebody has to be in charge. And guess who's not going to always be us? But we have been so divided trying to fight for power and who's going to be in charge. Whatever the assignment is, there has to be established leadership that we all agree to follow. There has to be a common vision that we all buy into. And last but not least, everyone has to know their role and do their part. Tell somebody you have a role to play. Got a and I'm counting on you to do your part. Now, if you stay in your lane and do your part, it's going to have tremendous benefits in helping us get to the promised land. Now, Sunday and last Wednesday, we talked about Nehemiah and how he and his people closed ranks and they rebuilt their community. They rebuilt their church. They rebuilt their economy. And as they started to rebuild, the enemy posed a question. And the question he posed to them was, can they really do it? Can they really do it? Whenever we talk about embarking on something great in the kingdom, the question is, can it really be done? And we're going to see in Nehemiah 4 that they were not asking questions out of curiosity. They were asking certain questions to sow seeds of doubt and discord. Turn your Bibles to Nehemiah 4, verses 1 through 3. When the enemy see us closing ranks, when he see us coming together, he's going to pose questions to try to sow seeds of doubt and discord to make us think we can't do what God has said. Does the enemy talk to anybody besides me? I mean, God says one thing, but the enemy will say something totally different. Nehemiah 4 verses 1 through 3. I got to say, man, I mean, amplify. It says, when Santibar heard that we were building the wall, he became furious, completely enraged, and he ridiculed the Jews. Listen, everybody is not excited about you building your life in God. Everybody's not excited about you fulfilling your purpose. See, there's some people when we share good news with, we expect them to be happy. Because the Bible says we should rejoice with those that rejoice. But I come to tell you, when you share your good news with some people, everybody's not happy about it. So with Santibal, when they heard that the Jews were coming together to rebuild their community, the Bible says he became furious and completely, I don't know what that is, completely enraged. Every sensibility in his body was upset about what they were doing. It's amazing how we could get emotionally invested in what other people are doing. I got so much time working on myself, I ain't got time to worry about what you're doing. And if I can't help you, guess what? I'm not going to hinder you. I'm going to get out your way. So he began to not only be angry, but he began to pour salt on them. He began to ridicule them. Verse 2 says, he spoke before his brothers the army of Samaria. What are these feeble Jews doing? Can they restore it for themselves? Can they offer sacrifice? Can they finish in the day? Can they revile the stones from the heaps of dust and rubble, even the ones that have been burned? Look at verse 3. Now, Toktabia, the Amorite, was beside him, and he said, even what they are building, if a fox should come on it, he will break down their walls. What's point song? First of all, who y'all think y'all are? And the other guy said, whatever you building, if a fox came on y'all wall, it's going to be so weak, it's going to fall down. Now, their enemies were asking specific questions. They were asking, first of all, 
can they restore it for themselves? Then they asked, can they offer sacrifice? Then they said, can you finish in a day? And last but not least, can you all actually revive the stones you need from the dirt that have been burned? So all of these sound like legitimate questions, amen? But I told you all before, these were not innocent questions. They were asking these questions because they were trying to sow seeds of doubt. Listen, God is saying, don't let the enemy and people get in your head. How many of y'all know the mind is the control tower? If the enemy or people can get into your head, they can then control and dictate your life. So, 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 so when you talk to certain people, I want y'all to hear me. When you talk to certain people, you're not just listening for what they say. You're also listening for what they're not saying. Can y'all give me on today? See, the Bible says that we ought to be gentle as dove, but wise as serpents. See, y'all only sometimes hear what people are saying. But I'm learning how to hear what they are not saying. So, so, so when they ask the question, can they restore it for themselves? What they were really asking is, do y'all have the skill, the capacity to actually do this? When they asked, can you offer sacrifice? What they were really asking was, is God going to really help y'all get this done? When they asked, can you finish in the day, what they were saying was, do you have time? How many of you know sometimes it feels like time is not on our side? He said, do y'all have even time to get it done? And then last, last but not least, when they asked about the stone, they were basically saying, do you have the resources to get it done? Can y'all see that on today? So the enemy even today is using these type of questions, these seats of doubt, to make a second guess what we know God is saying. He, are, are you qualified for the job? Do you have the capacity? Is God really working with you? Do you have time? No, you can owe. And what resources, where are they coming from? I don't know about y'all, but whenever God gives me a big vision, a big dream, or an idea, the enemy is always trying to sow seeds of doubt. And I'm going to show you on today, he will use anybody that will say something to make you second guess what you know God is saying. Look at Nehemiah 4. Nehemiah 4, verses 4 through 6. So people start pouring salt. They start sowing seeds of discord. Are you all qualified? Is God going to help you? Do you have time? Where's the money coming from? Look what Nehemiah did. Verse 4. It says, And Nehemiah prayed, Hear, O our God, how we are despised. We turn their taunts on their own heads. Give them up as prey in the land of captivity. Verse 5 says, Do not forgive their wrongdoings and do not let their sin be what they say, give them God. It says, Before you, for they have offended the builders and provoked you. Look at verse 6. It says, so we built the wall, and the entire wall was joined together to half its height, for the people had a heart to what? To work. So even though they were pouring salt, they were sowing seeds of discord, Nehemiah did not clap back at them. He went into prayer. Join me on today. Because God is saying, too often, we're giving our time, our energy, our emotions, our conversation to the naysayers. About who's not helping. Important. What are you doing? You're giving your energy to the naysayers. God is saying we need to stop entertaining certain people. Let me say it again. We need to stop entertaining certain people. Why? Because when we engage them, guess what we're not doing? We're not praying. We're not working. We're not moving forward. And that is their goal. We're going to see that your naysayers and doubters, they're saying all these things to distract you, to get you engaged with them and disengaged from the world. Drop down to verse 7. Verse 7 says, That the repair of the walls of Jerusalem went on, and that the breaches were being closed, what? They were very angry. When they found out that them pouring salt, so and see discord didn't stop. Because they were not distracted. The Bible said they got angry. I told you all, there's some people who are buying for your attention in a negative way. And it's meant to distract you. It's meant to cause you to lose focus. Am I talking about you on today? Is there anybody that had a conversation with somebody? Not 
के अंदर आप लोग क्यों बोल रहे हो to bed. Why? Because you allowed them to distract you, to get in your head. And I tell you this, the enemy will use anybody he can. But when he saw, when they saw that it didn't work, they got mad. When they saw that in spite of everything they tried to do, they still kept working. See, God is saying no matter what the enemy does, don't stop working. Don't stop moving forward. Don't stop praying because that is what the attack is all about. How do I stop them? How do I prevent them from doing what God has called them to do? And I will use everything, including the kitchen sink, to cause you to be distracted. I don't know about y'all, but when I, when I know the enemy is attacking my mind, I have to steal away. I begin to plead the blood of Jesus over my mind. The Bible said that we should cast down every imagination and every high thing that ex exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So when I know what God has said and I start hearing stuff that's contrary to God, so you know what? That, that, ain't, that ain't God. And then people start coming around saying stuff that ain't God. You know what? Wait a minute now. Wait, 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 wait a minute now. There's a distraction going on. And I think the distractor comes when we get close to the, getting the work completed. Come on out. When, when, you know, there was a game that we used to play. I forgot the name of it, but it was almost like a hide and seek game. And when you got close, they would say, you're hot. You're hot. And when you were in the wrong direction, they would say, you're cold. I believe when we start getting hot in the spirit, that's when the enemy wants to cause a distraction. Why? Because he don't want us to fulfill our call and our purpose. Verse 8 says this. When they couldn't stop them, it says, they all conspired together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to cause a disturbance in it. So when they realized they couldn't distract them, the Bible said the enemies came together. It's funny how people who don't really like each other can come together to fight against you. When did y'all become friends? But because they're being used by the enemy, they now have a common enemy called you. And so even people who don't like each other, the enemy will use to come together to fight against you. So it said that they conspired against them to cause a disturbance. But they were trying to do it, they were trying to break through their ranks. They were already working. They were doing what they were supposed to do, and the enemy was trying to break through their ranks. Verse 9. Verse 9. Verse 9 says, But we pray for our God. We pray for our God. No matter what's going on, pray for God. No matter what's going on, pray for God. It supersedes what was said before. So I don't care what the enemy is doing, what people are doing, but you pray to your God. You pray to your God, cancels out everything the enemy and people have been trying to do in your life. And we're going to see it on today. That the enemies can, they, they can plot, they can scheme, do whatever they want. But once again, you got to stay in the spirit. Because guess what? As long as you're in the spirit, the enemy can't touch you. He wants you to get in your flesh. He wants you to stoop down to their level where now you want to curse. You want to clap back. Listen, listen, y'all. Can we be real on today? I had a conversation with somebody this week. And they sent me there. I mean, they listen, listen, listen. There were some comments made about, you know, taking it back to the streets. And, uh... What he said was, you got Twitter fingers. And some he said, I said, man, look here. I said, it's best that we just stop talking. I said, because I feel myself about to say something I don't really want to say. But see, I was getting in my flush. But I realized in the beginning, it was the spirit. Because this person is a nice person on any, other, any given day. But they were allowing the enemy to use them. Now, mind you, this is the weekend. I got to get prepared for Sunday. So what if I'm... Over the weekend, cussing at him, getting distracted. Come on now. The Bible's you have to watch and pray. Can you all recognize when the enemy is coming to get you? The Bible said we're not ignorant to Satan's devices. Why? Because he uses the same thing and the same people over and over again. Why? Because it works. Because it works. See, we have to get to the point where he had to change his plan. Because guess what? You, in particular, are not getting under my skin no more. 
I know that from time to time the enemy uses you to get me off. Not today. Not, not, not today. It says, in spite of everything that was going on, it says, but we pray to our God. And because of them, we set up a guard against them day and night. Look at verse 10. It says, then the leaders of Judah said, these are the leaders. So we talked about the seeds of discord. Listen, if you don't begin to cast that stuff out of your mind, if you let it stay there, it's going to bear fruit. If you linger on thought that I'm not a God long enough, it is going to bear fruit. It's failing. And there is much rebel. And we ourselves are unable to build the wall. Come on now. Isn't this the same thing the enemy was saying? Yeah. Now they are repeating what the enemy was saying. See, the enemy, he broke through their ranks because he planted seeds of discord. And look, he worked because leaders influence. So whether you're a leader in the church, on your job, in your family, if the enemy gets through you, he knows he can get to the people. So the enemy began to attack the people. The leader says, they said what the enemy said and not what Nehemiah said. Catch this. Nehemiah said, we are able to do it. But now they're saying, we can't do it. So, so, so they said, we ourselves are able to build the wall. In other words, we don't have the capacity. We don't have the resources. We don't think God's going to help us to do it. And they kept talking. Look at verse 11. This is the leaders. It says, our enemy said, they're finna now begin to tell the people what the enemy said. It says, our enemy says that we will not know or see us until we are among them. Kill them and put a stop to the work. So you have a leader in front of people saying, listen, y'all, our enemy said that when they come, we won't even see them. They're going to kill us. And we won't finish the work. Once again, the seeds of doubt have been planted. It says, they said to us 10 times repeatedly, for every place you turn, they will come up against us. What are they doing? It's still fear. It says, so I stationed our men behind the wall in the wall place, at the door, at the door, open, at the opening position. Right. And he was trying to hold. Okay, I know what they're saying, but we need to get ready to fight. We have to get ready for war. Look at verse 14. It says, when I saw their fear, I stood and said to the nobles and officers and the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Confidently remember the Lord who is great and awesome. And with courage from him, fight for your brothers. Fight for your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your home. Now, as a great leader, Nehemiah recognized the emotional state that the people were in. How many know emotions are real? How many of you know fear is a natural emotion? And when people start making some threats, now listen, when that guy made that threat, it bothered me a little bit. I said, you know what? He don't want none of this. Exactly. Fear will make you start preparing. Look it over your shoulder, so fear is real. You know what? Listen, don't worry about that. He said, I want you to put your confidence in God. He said, I want you to have the courage of God. See, sometimes we're trying to do these things in our own strength. But how many know God will give us the strength? Come on, the Bible says not about power, nor about, but by the Spirit of God, says, Lord. He said, I will give you courage. So he them that you are more than yourself. Tell somebody the spiritual battle is bigger than us. Come on, come on, you're fighting for your husband, your wife, your kids, your community. He said, I know you're scared. I know, I, I know you're concerned, but you have to close ranks and continue to fight. Look at verse 15. Look at verse 15. Are you all still with me on today? It says in verse 15, it says, now when our enemies heard that we knew about their plot against us and that God had frustrated their plan. God will warn us 
about the plans of our enemies. And guess what? He will frustrate their plans. See, the battle is not yours. It belongs to God. So when people are plotting and scheming and pouring salt on you, like Nehemiah, you go into prayer. And guess what? Everything they meant for bad, God's going to turn around. So good. God will expose the enemy. Has God ever shown you the heart and the intent of people? They ain't got your best interest in mind. They don't really like you. They jealous of you. And it's not for us to, no, 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 this. Let me go into prayer. Because no weapon formed against me will prosper. And every tongue that rises against me, it shall be condemned. Come on now. That's our heritage as the believers. So once again, we can't come off the wall to fight and argue with people. Why? Because we got to build the wall. And the enemy will use your son, your daughter, your wife, your boss, anybody he can who is not prayed up to distract you, to stop you from doing the work. Look at verse 16. It says, from that day on, half of my servants carried on the work while the other half held the spears, the shields, and the bows, and the breastplates. It says, and the captains were behind the whole house of Judah. Verse 17, those who were rebuilding the wall and those who were, those who carried burden loads themselves so that everyone worked with one hand and held a weapon with the other. So they're building with a hammer and they got a sword in the other hand. Why? Because I'm going to work, but I'll go into spiritual warfare when I have to. Come on now. Verse 18, it says, every builder had a sword secured at his side as he built. It says, and the one who sounded the trumpet to summon the troop stood by my side. It says, and I said to the nobles, the officers, and the rest of the people, the work is great and extensive. And it says, and we are separated on the wall. It says, far from one another, there was a break in the ranks. Look at what he said in verse 20. It says, whenever you hear the sound of the trumpet, gather to us there. And it says, our God will fight for us. In other words, when the trumpet sounds, close ranks. That means the enemy is lurking. The enemy is near. So we have to now put all of our differences to the side. Come on, all of our self-interest so we can come together and fight against our common enemy. I don't know about you all, but there is a trumpet sounding in the spirit. And God has given us the order to close ranks. It is time to come together so we can fight against our common enemy so we can rebuild what God has called us to build. I'm going to close by saying this. The work that God has called us to do is bigger than many of us can imagine. And I am praying that God will send people who will close ranks and join in with this work. I mean, people who are smarter than me. People who are more gifted than me. People who are willing to work, who are willing to pray. People who are willing to give their time, their energy, their resources. Why? Because this work is great. It's great. And I'm going to say this. I'm not even asking nobody to join personally. I'm asking everybody to pray. And you say, God, have you called me to join in on this work? Because, see, the work I'm talking about is not just this Sunday morning stuff. It's, not, it's, 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 it's bigger than this. So, so God wants you to pray and say, God, have you called me to be a part of the major work of Just Christ Ministries? And guess what? If he says no, ain't no love lost. You're still a member. I'm still, I'm still your pastor. But I'm looking for those that God has called to be a part of this work. And guess what? You ain't got to be a part of this church. There may be somebody watching online. And you want to be a part of this work. God is saying this. You ain't got to be a member, but you have to close ranks. You have to recognize established leadership. You have to join the common vision. And you have to know and do your role. When I was preparing this part, Donna came to mind. And years ago, Donna came to me and she said, uh, Pastor, 
God has called me to work with you. I said, okay. And so while we're working and working, we had quite a few differences of opinion. <laughs> and I use that, that lightly. <laughs> so much so that there have been numbers of times where she's wanted to quit. And sometimes I wanted her to quit. But we knew that God was doing something. So we had to put our differences to the side. Our personal preferences to the side for the sake of the work. And guess what? Now we just easy greasy. Amen. And I, and I tell you this, the work she's doing behind the scenes with grants and stuff like that, I couldn't do that. I mean, listen, she was up. And I'm just going to give her, I don't want to do. She was up to 2 o'clock in the morning the other day writing a grant. I said, how much do we owe you? She said, nothing. Why? Because she's doing what God has called her to do. Your job might not be to write grants, but whatever it is that God's calling you to do. I'll, listen, before the holidays, I want people to let me know what God has told them. Because we're going to come together, and I want to lay out the whole vision. See, I've been giving out bits and pieces here and there, you know, spoon feeding. But I want those people to know where we're going. And how we're going to get there. Whatever your role is, play your role, do your part. We're going to get there. Give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, give God a praise. Come on, give God a praise. Amen. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. I told you all before, when this mental health facility is built, we're going into business. Come on, we're going into business. How do we build businesses back in our community. Come on now. Come on now. Anybody excited about that? You know, Mr. Gunn don't talk that much, but media is also a big part of what we're doing. And he's getting some major training right now. We have the capacity to go on cable network because of the training he did. God's putting everything in order for us to take back our city, our communities. But come on now. But we have to have people who are willing to work. Let me clarify this. God is not saying neglect your family. He's not saying neglect yourself. If your part is 30 minutes a week, do your part. Come on now. God is not trying to put no burden on nobody because if everybody do their part, it's going to get gone. And I believe as a pastor, God has gifted this body with everything we need. Amen. Give God one hand clap of praise. I can go on and on and on, but I really want to have some more in-depth, private conversations because I want to hear your thoughts. I want your opinion because once again, I'm not the smartest person in the room. I'm just the leader, but I'm open to hear what you have to say. There's some things that God's called you. I, I can't do it. I was telling Coach Carter, you know, boxing was a vision, but I can't box. So guess what? He runs the gym. He runs the gym in line with the vision of the house. And so God is calling you all to leadership positions to run things in your field of expertise for the kingdom. Now, I'm excited about that, y'all. Listen, I... I want to say this. I have never been as excited about ministry as I am now. You know why? You know why? Because it's starting to make sense to me now. Can I talk for a minute before I let y'all go? See, I wasn't excited about just coming to church. I did it because I thought what well, we had to just, just come to church, preach a sermon, what have you. But, but, but that, that wasn't enough for me. That wasn't enough for me. But now that God's released us to go beyond these walls, I'm excited now. Because, because when I gave my life to Christ, I wanted to be a part of something that made a difference. That changed people, changed communities, changed families, and we had that opportunity. So I'm excited. So I'm asking you guys, please pray. And ask God specifically, God, I know I'm an usher. I'm a faithful usher. But pastor's talking about a greater work. Have you called me to do it? If God says, no, keep ushering. Keep ushering. I'm on the praise team. God, are you asking me to do a greater work? If he said, no, keep on the praise team. But if he says, yes, we got to get it done.
Amen. We thank and praise God for his word on today. Give that one more hand cup of praise. I know this may be unorthodox for some people who are watching online, even some of you all here, but we're coming out of the box. Amen. I, I do not want to be restricted by religious borders and what have you, because I think for too long that's held us back. Amen. Now we want to be free in Christ to do what Christ did. Christ did most of his work where? In the streets. In the streets with the with the uh, the prostitutes. Come on now, the, the least fortunate. Amen. And that's where we're going now. There may be someone right now who is not saved, who don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now is your opportunity. Maybe you're in the building or online. God loves you with an everlasting love, and he wants to save you on today. Every head bow your close. If you're here in the building and you don't know Christ, I want to pray for you. Put your hand up. Put it down. Don't be ashamed. I don't see anybody. Maybe there's somebody online who's watching. You don't know Christ. If you want to give your life to Christ, simply repeat this prayer after me. Father God, I admit that I'm a sinner. But I believe you sent your son to die for my sins. Come into my heart. Save me. Fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, your sins have been forgiven. You are a born again believer. Hallelujah. The angels in heaven are rejoicing with you. As always, I recommend that after you give your life to Christ, you join a church. Not just any church, but the church that God has called you to join. If you want to join this church in person or online, you can come now. If you want to join online, you can simply dial the number 773-455-0008. Text the word JOIN. If there's someone in the building that wants to join, will accept you now based on your Christian experience. Is there one? Amen. Give God one more hand clap of praise. How many of y'all were blessed on today? How many of y'all were challenged on today? Amen. So your homework assignment again is to go into prayer. Amen. Father God, we thank you for our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, our hearts have felt. As we leave this place, God, we would not leave your presence. Go with us, stand by us, keep us covered with your blood. Until we meet again, all God's people say, Amen. 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 Give somebody a fist bump to you. Love Jesus loves them too.